hello and welcome to the rather strange Jack and Ori. As you can see, we're back here again and we're going to invent another story. And I shall start the story and then, when I decide, I shall pass it on to... We shall see who. <laughs> Sam, Joe and Samantha were safely seated by their loving mum on the railway carriage seat. They were on the train that was called the Trans-Siberian Express. <laughs> and they were on the way from London to <laughs> Hong Kong. Now their mother was rather worried to leave them, but she met this very gentle and loving old lady who was sitting in the same carriage. And she said to this lady, would you look after my children for me? And the lady smiled sweetly and said yes. The mother got off and waved a tearful goodbye. The steam train came to life. There was steam came out, smoke came out, and they started to leave the station. The children got very excited because this was their first time they'd ever been on a train. They were sitting looking at the sweet old lady and suddenly she did something, but not too strange. She opened a bag and took <laughs> out a bottle. <laughs> but they couldn't read very well and on the bottle they could see g e n a bottle of g e n <laughs> Now, she opened the bottle of g e n and drank it. And then something extraordinary happened. This sweet, gentle, loving old lady slowly changed into a blonde, rosy-cheeked young lady before their very eyes. But they noticed something really interesting. Her mouth that had been kind before suddenly became narrow and nasty and rather evil. <laughs> Nick. Ha, 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 ha. She laughed <laughs> menacingly as the train went into a tunnel. It went black, which is something that happens when trains go into tunnels. <laughs> and they thought, quick, she can't see, let's escape. And they started, and they went across and they grabbed the door. Because it was one of these old trains which had little compartments, all with separate doors. And they tried to pull the door open, but it was locked. And there was no escape. Vicky. So they were forced to turn back, and the woman was now behind them, smiling menacingly and putting on some nice red lipstick. <laughs> she said, hello, darling. <laughs> my name is Samantha. And Samantha gasped. She thought, that's my name as well. She said, I am going to be your escort for this trip. The children thought, what shall we do? The best thing to do is make friends with her until we understand what she's playing at. So Joe went up to her and went, Richard, what does g i n mean? <laughs> the lady explained that it stood for growing increasingly nasty. Oh. And after you drink some, you get nastier and nastier and nastier until it wears off. But nobody knows how long it will take to wear off. And so she'd had some of the drink and she was getting nastier and nastier. And Sam and Joe and Samantha were getting more and more frightened as the train went on into the night. The old lady's smile made them shiver. She was a very nasty lady. She went, went to a school, she told them, in London. And when she was at school, everyone treated her very badly. And ever since, she wanted to be as nasty as possible to any... Linda. As she could possibly be. Now, Sam, Joe and Samantha at this point were desperate. But Sam said to everybody, look, whispered, because she was busy tipping in the bottle again. The, <coughs> get, it, mm, oh, just to make sure it gets nastier, nastier, nastier. Well, for goodness sake, yes. You know, this is how He said, don't panic. What we need to do, chaps, is to find the antidote which obviously will mean that whatever she drinks in return, it'll cancel out what she's got and she'll go back tonight. But what are we going to do, said Samantha? How are we going to get out of this carriage? Do we even find... Well, well, just a minute, said Sam. If we could get up the train towards the bar area, I remember my <laughs> auntie... You remember <laughs> Auntie May? Yes. Well, she always used to go up to the bar area for, for a g i n <laughs> Did she? Angela. But too late. Because when they turned round, they saw the young, young woman with a paintbrush. And she was painting on the blind that was covering the window. And you could see a landscape forming. And already they were being drawn into the blind and into the landscape. They were flying, they were floating with this one. They fought, they fought, oh, for goodness sakes, fight back, fight back. <laughs> But they couldn't. 
and they were drawn out and drawn out and they thought, oh no, there's the moon, oh no, there's the stars, oh no, we're on Mars. Jim, Mars. This was amazing. Sam was very impressed. He'd always wanted to go to Mars, but he'd never thought he'd get there by going into a blind on a train. <laughs> he was an excited little boy, though. Joe was not so sure, and Samantha was really annoyed. Where was the woman? She was behind them. Welcome to Mars, she said, drinking still at her bottle. <laughs> what are we doing here? Why have you brought us here? Because I'm nasty, she said. We're not going to wait any longer. And they ran off. She couldn't catch up with them because they could run so fast. And they ran and they ran and they ran till they came across a whole group of little children just like them. Oh, hello. What's your names? They said, our names are Tom, Bill, Mary, Izzy, Fred, <laughs> oh, and Dick. Sakes. Oh, hello. <laughs> Sylvester. So Sam, Joe, and Samantha said, all of you with those wonderful long names, <laughs> many names, help us, help us, please. And they said, why? They said, well, this lady is very evil and nasty. She drinks, get it in. <laughs> oh, my goodness, said, not get it in. Yes, get it in. Right. Well, as you said, we need an antidote, and they're... Tom said, I've got an antidote, and uh, he said, but I've also got an uncle dote as well. Come back and meet them. Oh. So that's what they did. They ran off with, uh, uh, as fast as they could go, being chased by this rather nasty lady who got nastier and nastier, and they got to their door of auntie and uncle dote, and they banged on the door and they opened it up, and auntie and uncle dote came out and said, aha, I recognise that lady, and, went and frightened her, and it was true. The antidote worked. The lady suddenly trembled and shivered and changed slowly back into the sweet, gentle, lovely old lady. Oh, oh. yeah. So, <laughs> they said, are you all right now? And they said, yes. Well, so, well, I said, well, are you sure you're a nice old person? I'm not a nasty young person. And they said, no, I'm very nice and I'm very nice to these children. They said, right, well, come in and have a cup of tea. <laughs> Richard. After they'd had tea, everyone was much happier and no one was nasty at all. But there was a problem. All the children were on Mars and they needed to get across to the Trans-Siberian Express where they'd all started because people would be waiting at the other end at the station and they weren't on the train. Mm. How can we get back onto the train from Mars? Now, this was a problem. But Auntie and Uncle Dote had an idea. They decided that if all the children got together and made a great big ship, they could fly back from Mars, back through the blind, onto the train. So they all started work. They went to get wood and metal and bits of plastic and nails and screws, and they started building this enormous spaceship out of anything they could find. Vicky. <laughs> but then, as they built it, and it got bigger and bigger, somebody piped up. But how are we going to get it started? There's no fuel on Mars. This was a problem. Everyone sat around and scratched their heads. They'd been so busy building this enormous and very beautiful spacecraft, nobody thought, how are we going to get there? Then suddenly Sam thought, I know. I was doing physics the other day, and I'm sure somebody said to me that on Mars, if you mine below the surface, there's some magic material, which if you dig it up, is probably more powerful, probably a thousand times more powerful than any fuel you could find on Earth. And they dug down in the earth, and they found it. It was glowing red, red, red hot. But, strangely enough, it wasn't hot at all. It was, you could touch it, you could pick it up. And it was a form, it was like a jelly, a strange jelly-like substance, a bit like jelly. And they took <laughs> it, and they put it into their spacecraft, and nothing happened. And they said, well, why is nothing happening with this? And they said, ah, well, the stuff is, is, is a source of power, but... It also needs one other ingredient, which is your imagination. And what you have to do is you all have to put your hands into this jelly and hold it there and think, 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 and think yourself back to where you want to be. Jim. So they shoved their hands in the jelly and they all started thinking about being back on the train. And before they knew it, they came in through the blind and there they were, back on the train, which really confused the ticket collector, <laughs> who'd come into what he thought was an empty carriage. Suddenly there was hundreds of children and a little old lady and their hands were all covered in jelly. <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to the guard about this, he said, and left. They looked at the jelly on their hands. It was wonderful stuff, how powerful it was. Sam was looking at it thinking, it's really powerful. Gosh, I wonder if I thought if I was at the front of the train driving it, if it would work. Bang! Suddenly, there he was at the front of the train, driving it, Sam with the jelly on his hands, with the train driver looking at him, saying, what are you doing here? I'm driving the train, I suppose, but I'll think I'm myself back into the carriage again. And he did. Bang! He was back in the carriage. Angela. 
Then he was the ticket collector because he'd gone bang and he was looking at the others and saying, tickets please. And they're going, oh no, we haven't got the tickets. But if we thought we were tickets, bang, they were all tickets. <laughs> and they landed on the floor. And there was all these tickets lying there. And somebody else came in. They couldn't quite see because they were big, whoever it was. And one of them stood on Joe. He's going, no, I'm a ticket. Get off. <laughs> and so he thought, I've got to think again, I've got to think again. He went, bang! And this woman said, oh, I'm awfully sorry, because she was standing on a little boy. She, he says, my name's Joe, and all these tickets are real people. You... Linda. And all these tickets are real people, don't you understand? But we've just got to think ourselves back. Come on, everybody, think, think. Or well, suddenly, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and got terribly crowded again, which upset this woman who thought out of all the carriages in the whole of the train, she'd managed to get the empty one. Oh, she's so <laughs> unbelievable how this is just to stop. She pulled the cord. <laughs> And the trans, unheard of, Siberian <laughs> Express, ground to a halt. There was absolute silence for a minute, you know, the way, the way, the way it goes quite. Absolute silence. <laughs> and suddenly they heard the roll of glass against metal, and coming down the corridor was a bottle with G -E -N written on it. <laughs> Sylvester. The G -E -N bottle <laughs> rolled past, and all the people in the carriage looked and watched it. And then suddenly, a little man with a beard and a very furry hat came after it and said, <laughs> They realised they were no longer in England or on Mars, but they were in Russia. So this man rushed past and they all rushed after him and they rushed down the train and everyone rushed about all over the place because they knew that if they could get this bottle and put it away, lock it up in a cage, everything would be fine. And they could all carry on on their railway journey all the way across Russia and through China and to Hong Kong. And that's exactly what happened. They got the get uh, uh, bottle, they took it down to the, the conductor and he stuck it in a cage and he locked it there and they all sat back and sat down in their carriage and enjoyed the rest of the journey all the way to Hong Kong. Oh, oh yes. yes. And so, that's the end of our story and it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from Vicky. Goodbye. Jim. Goodbye. Linda. Goodbye. Uh, Richard. Goodbye. Angela. Goodbye. And Nick. Goodbye. There's a new Jack and Nori story starting on Monday afternoon. What are you building?